Hello everyone, welcome back, welcome to Flo's channel. I hope you've had a great day. Actually, let me start by saying this. This is September, the first of September. Oh my goodness, we thank God for his grace, his love. I mean, he's brought us this far, so we have nothing but gratitude to our great God. And today, like I said, I will be bringing you authentic, raw stories. And I'm super grateful, actually, today to be sharing this with amazing friends. I know these people very well. And guess what? I will start right here. This is Jeremiah Kendagor. As you see him here today, he has over 30 years of experience in the banking industry, and not just that, but especially in the treasury department. So I'm sitting here with the brains, and I'm super excited. We'll be picking his brain very shortly. And then this beautiful angel right here is uh, Nyambura Maina. And Nyambura, wow, I can say I have learned so much just being around her in the space or the time limit that it has been. But above all, today she brings us knowledge and information that she has gathered in the retail department, in the banking sector. So she's been in several banks, led people to the top level, and here they are sitting very, very humbly and calm with me. So you can imagine, guess what? I, I'm just going to say this. I am not, and I'm not saying this so that it can remain a permanent story, but my math skills are very wanting. So we are growing on that. So it's it's a fun thing to be sitting with kind of like champions. You know, these guys are, are geniuses. But today they bring us information in another industry that they have also grown into and actually created a lot of success in that area. So guess what? Would you even think or would you even guess the topic of today? Hmm. I don't know. But anyway, let's talk about network marketing. Let's talk about this big monster. Probably you're already shrinking right now. You're like, oh my God, Flo. Uh, I, do you even have that courage to talk about that? And of course the answer is yes. I have now been in that space for about uh, close to six years now. And I can tell you, wow, the highs and lows have been challenging enough even for me to say I am still overcoming. But at least today I have my experts with me, people who can tell me how has it been? What is this thing? How is it? Is it scary? Is it doable? You know, can I die trying to do this? So. If you're that person, if you're that excited about our conversation today, then welcome, welcome, welcome. So, we say ladies first, we always say ladies first. We'll start with the beautiful uh, Nyambura Maina. So, Nyambura Maina, what is this thing about network marketing? Can you please demystify this monster for us? All right, thank you so much, Flo. Uh, it's really is my joy and a uh, privilege to be on this call. Um, and just basically to be able to shed some light on my understanding of what network marketing basically is all about and uh, from where i'm coming from basically network marketing is just being able to do business with people okay is it and that simple it is that simple <laughs> it's as simple as that mm -hmm. because if you think about it in the day-to-day -day activities of our lives we cannot there is i'm not aware of any industry where you can basically survive without having to need people in your life. Now, how you bring these people into your life and so that they can be able to understand what it is you're doing and you convince them to be a part of what you're doing. That basically is, is, is what it is because you're networking with these people. It doesn't matter whether you're in the healthcare industry. If, for example, you started a pharmacy, you cannot succeed as a pharmacist if people don't come to your pharmacy to buy drugs, and there are so many uh, pharmacies and chemists around uh, around you, so what would make one person live uh, pass by one pharmacy and walk into your pharmacy? It is because there's something you've done. Either the way you branded your pharmacy or the way you talk to these people, they get attracted to you. They'll come and buy the common product that is uh, in the shelves of every other pharmacy, but they will prefer to come to you. So when you think about network marketing, it is basically being able to draw people to you to come and understand what it is you're doing or to come and buy your products or to come and listen to your knowledge. For me, that is what it is. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow. Thank that you. is such a nice definition or she's really broken it down very well. And actually, it reminds me, uh, I remember probably a year or two ago, I heard someone say, for those of us in the faith of uh, Jesus, he was the first network marketing person. I mean, he recruited his 12. And so sometimes when today we hear about recruiting, we're like, oh my God, I do not want to recruit. What is recruiting? So Jeremiah, tell us, when we share with people in this space of networking and they tell us, I don't know people, how can you address that situation? 
how can you make it easier or lighter to the person that is watching us today probably they have an interest in this industry but they've had so many things about you must do this you must do that what can you tell us from that perspective of i don't know people uh, it's normally a very interesting uh, scenario and um i don't know how to answer it but uh, maybe the, the blunt answer of course is that um, there is no single human being that doesn't have that doesn't know people first of all you know your mother most likely <laughs> you know your brother you know your sister you live with somebody uh you meet people every single day uh so every human being by the way knows somebody and in fact i think i read uh, read uh, somewhere about uh, psychology or uh, something about um how people influence people and there is normally something that is said that um every human being can influence a minimum of 15 people it's been studied that um the the least a human being can influence another human being the least number of people you can influence are 15. so even if you say you don't know people today there is somebody whom you can call and tell them let's have lunch and they will not ask you why or when or how they will just tell me where or uh, and they will be there for example what we normally say there is somebody you can tell sit and they will sit you tell them stand they will stand you tell them jump they normally don't even ask you uh why are you telling me to jump they just tell you how high do you want me to jump so uh that is a misnomer but yes i have I, 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 the, the issue about uh i don't know people normally is a personal thought process and actually based on that same note we say again those of us all of us here in this faith space we say with god all things are possible so is it that uh, sometimes we pick what we want to believe and then the rest we leave it on the table because if i say with god all things are possible then is it also possible that i'm able to connect with so many other people in the world and stop saying i don't know people I don't know what you have to say about that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's precisely the point. In fact, what, what I'm trying to allude to is that the, the reason why you think you don't know anyone you can talk to is because the idea that you want to talk to people about is an idea that you are not fully convinced about. Wow. So normally, it is not about other people. It's normally about yourself. It's about you knowing that the idea you want to share is the absolute best idea if you know that what you are going to share will change somebody's life in a positive way you will all the names of the people that you can share with will just pop up so normally and the challenge that i want to give all of us is whenever you your mind tells you i don't know anyone actually the issue the, what your mind is actually telling you is that the idea you want to share is not good enough even for yourself so the first person you need to sell any idea to is not the other person it's yourself sell it to yourself the moment you believe on it guess what everybody else will believe on it wow how amazing so today i want you to leave a comment for us have you bought into yourself first remember believe starts with you and jeremiah has done a good uh, work or job on it breaking it down so if you buy yourself if you buy the products that you believe in then definitely you'll be walking around you know even their walk their style and their talk and their tone will just speak for itself because earlier on i was sharing with uh, nyambura telling her chema chaji user kibaya chaji chambeza sio so whatever you know you have that is so good probably it will sell itself even uh, and, and these are the people that we say we don't know they will be attracted to us right so share your comments with us as viewers just tell us what do you think on that issue as I go through the questionnaire that I have for my dear friends here <clears throat> so if it took you Nyambura 20 years to build in the space of networking would you do it absolutely absolutely i would do it a hundred percent and let me tell you from the space i'm coming from and this is um, a real life lesson for me something that i constantly reflect on um naturally i am a people person i think my greatest uh, talent and gift is the gift of my mouth <laughs> uh, i'm able to 
to uh, buy an idea and if I'm convinced like he said if I buy it I, I buy it myself I am very confident and very comfortable to share the same idea with other people now I've been in the banking sector for over 17 years and when I reflect back on the 17 years I was basically um, I, I, I basically was in the retail uh, banking arm of the various banks that I work with and basically when you're in the retail arm of banking what you basically do you're the people who build the business okay you, you will initiate a branch of a business of, of a bank and you will initiate it at a point where you have zero balance sheet you have zero customer and you've been given a target to grow that bank and the primary target is you need to break even you need to recover the costs the bank um, spends in setting up that branch and how do you do that you have to go out there get convince customers to come and open accounts with that bank they put in their deposit and then you convince others to borrow loans so that this money that the servers are bringing you lend and you make money and then they transact you 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 there are all manner of transactions that they need to do because every transaction they do the bank earns a commission and that's how you make the money that enables you then to give a return to the bank and that, that return basically is to the investors and the interesting thing that I would say and, and this applies basically in every sphere I'm just speaking about banking because that is um, the experience I have when you leave that institution that you, you, you work for for example you notice you live as you those customers that you got from wherever you got them from and you put that them in that institution you leave them and what happens is that institutions forever continues to earn from your effort but you don't live with the customer since i left banking about two and a half years ago there is not a single customer i have gotten out of the institutions where i put i put them they continue to be there they continue to benefit the shareholders they continue to benefit the management banks continue to, to thrive on it and it's okay because that's what they had employed me to do now, when I look back in the 17 years, I thank God because of the exposure that I got and that's where I discovered, oh, wait a minute, this is who I am. I'm a people person. I'm supposed to go out there if I believe in an idea and I share with it with them. Now, when I think about the effort I put in and I didn't work out with any of it, then I tell myself, if it's going to take me another 20 years to build my business that will outlive me, a business that now can take care of my retirement because my my former employers no longer take care of my retirement why would I not do it and number two why was I very passionate about uh, for example for me driving retail banking is because you do a lot of financial literacy you you teach people how to make money how to invest their money because I mean God put me on this planet to add value to somebody there are some people that I met who had basically no idea even on how to do basic bookkeeping but along the way you find that you've trained them on how to do bookkeeping now they can be able to account for their income and their expenses they can learn how to invest and today they are running multi-million dollar company so I feel that is such an accomplishment so as a networker if today I have a brilliant idea that I believe has is going to have an impact and change the lives of the people if it's going to take me 20 years to build that business along the way in those 20 years I will have impacted so many people and at the end of the day I will uh, build a business which I can live as an inheritance for my children and my children's children so yes I will do it and I will do it with so much joy and so much energy. Mm -hmm. Thank wow. You. you have had her, Nyambura Maina. She's super excited actually. She's one of the people that really have impacted on me in the space, especially of business, and it keeps me growing as a person. Now, she's talked about if it took her 20 years, she'll still do this so that she can leave a legacy not just for her children, but for her children's children. That is profound. And I'm talking about, you know, we do the figures together and we look at uh, some serious numbers in this world. We no longer talk about a million dollars. We talk about, I think, trillions in dollars. And that is the type of legacy that you're talking with, uh, with Nyambura. So, Jeremiah, back to you. I would say, what now does it take for you to build in the space of that long? Because I know all of us, actually, I'm also a victim. When I joined the space of networking, I was thinking that I'll be rich tomorrow. 
So, and of course, I wasn't rich tomorrow. We are still here today. We are still grinding, but getting better. So, what does it take for you to really be grounded and be able to achieve the dreams that Nambora is talking about? Absolutely. I think I just need to really, uh, first of all, uh, mention one or two things about network marketing from what we said. First of all, it's a powerful industry. Personally, I uh, got sold into network marketing industry as way back in 1997. Wow. Um, and uh, I was sold into that um, idea when I read Robert Kiyosaki book about uh, rich, part, uh, rich Dad, poor dad, poor dad, and the next book, which is uh, Cash Flow Quadrant. And one of the things that I got in these books is that it's better to earn 1% of the effort of 100 people than to earn 100% of your own personal effort. But after, getting, after being in the industry for uh, a number of years, since 1997 to 2000, 2005, I didn't, have, I didn't see the success that I was looking out for. But little did I know, just like I alluded to earlier, that um, the, the change that you need is yourself. And that change takes time to be accomplished. Today, I can say probably I, I, I have a, a little bit of some success in the last few months. I'm sure you know that. Um, but that success did not come in the two months that I say, in two months I made this. But in the many years that I have been involved in this industry, that has continually changed my thought process, my mind process. Now that is where the, that's where the, the rubber meets the road. That is where we say, you need to change your mind. You need to change your atti attitude about what you are doing and come up with the right mindset for success. And that, by the way, applies to any industry. Even if you talk about, whatever industry you talk about, it doesn't take overnight to become successful. It takes a process. Most of us want to, uh, what we call microwave type of uh, <laughs> yes, success. success. Mm -hmm. You want to be successful today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. but. I also want to say something about the network marketing industry. If you align yourself with the successful people in the industry, you could actually experience success in a shorter time. It's only being able to know, to tap to the right coach, to the right person who will hold your hand. And in this industry, and the beauty about this industry is that there are enough people who can take you by the hand and catapult you to the right success that you need. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, so ladies and gentlemen, it is doable. It is absolutely doable. She's given us the will. He's given us the wherewithal, you know, like the direction up to how it can be achieved. And we're talking about time. I mean, even God builds the world and everything, the humans and the animals, it took him seven days and he's God. He would have just done and everything was there. But he taught us the process. So why are we so afraid of the process? Share with us in the comments. Let us know what has been bothering you. Maybe you built your business and it fell apart after the first year. Would you do it again? I mean, I've studied the book Eric Warre GoPro and he talked about professional network marketing. What are you? Are you an amateur? I mean, <laughs> a poser. A poser. Uh -huh. And then the network is the, the professional. Yeah. So today we have a very interesting conversation. Actually, we are laughing because I think we've been through all those stages Absolutely. and we don't even know if I know I'm no longer an amateur. I am truly serious. <laughs> Nyambura, Jeremiah, please True. judge me. True. Yeah, I, I will, I'm here to succeed, guys. Guys, I don't, I don't know about you, but for me, I left my job. I was in the professional environment and I left that and I was like, let me see what is out there in the in the field of networking. But of course, nobody prepared me for the challenges that were coming ahead. And um, but like I said, six years down the line, here yeah, I am. I am alive. I am well, and I'm now connected to amazing people. People that build me. They built my belief. He talked about the power of mentorship. I mean, how how? Let Nyambura answer this. Nyambura, how badly do we need a mentor in networking? Oh wow! Let me tell you, uh, having a mentor in network. And networking is just like having Christ in your walk of faith mm -hmm. um, because um, there are many, many, many challenges that you're going to encounter. And uh, for me, the greatest challenge in network marketing is you tend to meet a lot of people who uh, will want to do what you're doing and they come with a lot of enthusiasm and they come with a lot of zeal and excitement. 
But as soon as they realize that the, this hard work that is required, they disappear. You actually will not even know where they went. And so you kind of sort of find yourself starting over and over and over again. And we are human. I mean, for you to be able to look back and say, oh, I thought I had um, three, four, five business partners we were working with, and now they've disappeared. They don't pick your calls. They don't do anything. In fact, you tend to learn <laughs> along the way. They've joined they something else. block you. <laughs> join somebody else so yeah. how do you stay yeah. the course mm -hmm. you need somebody who speaks to you and helps you understand this is part of the journey mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. that is a person the mentor who has already gone ahead of you they've gone through the valleys the mountains they understand mm -hmm. the rocky places in this business and they can tell you you know what it's okay mm -hmm. you can pick yourself back up again mm -hmm. begin afresh mm -hmm. But most importantly, they now teach you how to look for quality. Because the other challenge uh, personally I've encountered as a networker, uh, especially out here, is that you just want everybody to join your business. And along the way you realize a lot of the people, 80% of the people who join your business are actually not serious mm -hmm. and they drain you. They, 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 they drain your energy, they milk you dry. But when you have a mentor, they start teaching you the basics of looking for quality versus quantity. Because all you need are a few people who understand what it is they are looking for and who are willing to go the journey, understanding that it's not going to be easy. And those are the people who will help you realize your dream. So having a mentor to me is just like you confessing whatever faith you confess mm -hmm. and you need that figure that for me as a christian I, I mean i need to remind myself okay christ went through this okay when when i feel betrayed by my friends i want to remind myself oh wait a minute i haven't even gone to the extent of being put on the cross mm -hmm. The person I'm emulating, mm -hmm. the person I'm looking up to, my mentor in this journey of, of my faith, mm -hmm. has even been put on the cross by people who celebrated him yesterday. Mm -hmm. So when you have a mentor who has gone through all these issues, mm -hmm. they have been crucified, they have been judged, they, they've lost their whole team, mm -hmm. and they've been able to 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 um, to uh, start afresh, mm -hmm. and they've been able to rise above the mediocrity that mm -hmm. is around them. Mm -hmm. Now that is the that is the importance of having that mentor. Mm -hmm. And you cannot make it mm -hmm. without a mentor. Mm -hmm. And the beauty with today's technology is the mentor doesn't have to be um, a physical person yes. like a JKK mm -hmm. that I can run to. Mm -hmm. A mentor could just be somebody I have met online yes. and, and they're able to build me, they're mm -hmm. able to help me build my personal belief, mm -hmm. they're able to build me in the specific industry mm -hmm. I mean. So today, mm -hmm. mentors are at a click of a button. Mm -hmm. I don't even need to pay them anything. Mm -hmm. I just need to make sure I have my Wi-Fi when I'm low and I'm feeling I'm down and out and I, I need to ask myself who has gone through this journey and they have come out so successful that I want to be like that. Wow. Yes. Amazing. So guys, you need a mentor. You must have a mentor. We all have mentors here, physical and virtual, and we really honor them and we're grateful to God because they have really made us stand and keep on moving in this space. Now, I wanted to talk about something else. Oh my God. And this is big. In my eyes, it is big because I walked through that journey. Loss of self-esteem. It is only to Ghani. I hope you all, you know, you can understand my language. <laughs> that was in Swahili. In English, I will translate it this way. Like, what are those things? Flow. Yo, what are those things you're involved in? So there's this something called loss of self-esteem. Man, I suffered loss of self-esteem because, again, like we said, it's not everybody who captures the vision of the network industry. So sometimes, maybe the people that really love us, and they really love us, our family, our friends, they, they, they love us so much, and they are so afraid for us to venture into things that will destroy our lives. But of course, because they don't understand the journey, we don't blame them. In fact, we love them even more. They may not walk this journey with us. Jeremiah, you will tell us now, how do you overcome rejection because maybe even some of you are watching and laughing right now you'll be like yeah i've been rejected i've felt alone i've felt lonely in that space of networking but is it worth it and how do you overcome you know how do you fill the gaps of low self-esteem bring yourself up and bring yourself on top wow um that is uh, just like the first question that you asked yeah um so uh, people will reject you but i've realized that um People really don't reject you. It's more about understanding. People don't understand 
why are you in this type of space and are you trying to ask them to help you <laughs> succeed so mm -hmm. when people are kind of telling you no mm -hmm. they, are two, they, are, they are doing two things first they want to um, be out of them propping you up to succeed they are afraid that you want to lean on them for their success that's one mm -hmm. number two is that um, they are testing whether you really believe what you are talking about. So in fact, some of them will tell you, go make the money first, then when we see the money, we will join you. And do they ever join you after you've made the no, money? No, it's me. just an excuse. It's just an excuse. <laughs> this is a, a, a polite way mm -hmm. where somebody is telling you no, mm -hmm. but they don't want to tell you on your face. Mm -hmm. So they will tell you something like that. Mm -hmm. So. You need to be able to, uh, and that is why the issue of mentorship mm -hmm. is quite uh, important. Mm -hmm. um, so what you need to do in this industry, and uh, the beauty about network marketing, and like other industries, like uh, being an entrepreneur, going and starting out a, a business by yourself, normally you do it by your own self, and you hardly sometimes have a mentor or somebody who can take you by the hand. But guess what, in this industry of network marketing, multi-level marketing, there is always somebody ready to help you by the hand. Mm -hmm. Why can't you offer yourself mm -hmm. to be teachable, mm -hmm. to be coachable? Mm -hmm. That's as simple as that. Wow. Humble yourself. Yes. Be at the feet of somebody. Yes. Let somebody tell you, pick up that phone. Mm -hmm. And don't, don't say no, pick it up, pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. When somebody tells you, write the list, mm -hmm. write that list. Mm -hmm. And, and just do as they tell you, mm -hmm. and you will succeed. Mm -hmm. uh, because in this industry, there are just a few skills that you need to, to, to inculcate in your life, and you, are, you, you succeed. Wow, wow. Very well said. I don't know about you, what are you thinking, but we'd like to hear some comments from you guys. Drop those comments, and you may see me looking at my phone. I'm not trying to look at the time. I'm just looking at some of the questions that I have prepared for these excellent experts in this industry. And uh, Jeremiah has very well explained it. You may feel, yes, there's that loss, temporary loss of self-esteem. I got to a point at some place, I was like, oh my God, I am I am alone. I am lonely. You, to be alone and lonely, those are dangerous combinations. But guys, I made it out. I'm so grateful. And and uh, it's, it's now the reason why we are talking about this today. So if you're in that space of wondering, does the world hate you? No, they don't hate you. They just probably, like he says, may not understand exactly the space where you're in. And maybe they're also in a different space. And probably not everybody's looking to be in network marketing. Guys, let us be truthful. Is it really for everyone? It's not. No, absolutely not. So if we get no's, if we get the rejections, it's we are happy. Fine. We do the dance, Absolutely. we keep going, <laughs> we keep going, we keep going, <laughs> and uh, we, we connect with the, the people that are really for this. So, but it's an amazing opportunity. Personally, I feel like the world has opened up, just the possibilities are endless in this space. And I want now to address one thing, Nyamura, we came from the space of jobs. I was on a job, I was so happy, in fact I used to feel like I have to be like the best worker, like I have to be excellent in everything that I do, my patients have to be so happy with my services, above and beyond, that was my ambition. And it is okay until I realized probably the income from that area was not really sustainable for me and that's why I prayed to God and he led me into this particular space. Now, there is something that I want us, you to share with us in terms of how do you like for me i left my job and <laughs> fell into this without any plan and guys i suffered but i'm here now i'm okay <laughs> Nyambura, would you how would you encourage somebody to embrace this space if they are looking to venture into this because like they say we're looking for seven different streams of income Absolutely. actually for myself i think i have an upgrade i need 10 10 5 plus 5 is 10 <laughs> because when one falls apart you have nine right yeah, yeah so how do you transition from where you are and we are not even asking you or telling you stop doing what you're doing today and join us no we are only sharing information from our perspectives from our experiences so if if this is an interest though for you today Nyambura maybe advise our audience how could they do that transition and be comfortable okay awesome now, uh, from my personal experience, I kind of relate to yours <laughs> because um, for me, I think I was a, a, a 
at a place where I knew I needed to leave. Actually, I had known like when I look back, I knew like five years earlier that I needed to leave employment. But let me tell you, the trap of employment is this: um, employment makes sure it gives you enough money to meet your basics. Mm -hmm. Okay, and unfortunately, a lot of people get comfortable, and I, I, I don't blame them. I was one of those. Mm -hmm. So now. All of us know that we need uh, seven streams of income. In fact, a lot of employers, uh, they will invite personal development experts to talk to their employees, and they keep telling them, you need to have seven streams of income. But the challenge is this. You're in a full-time job. It, it hardly ever leaves room for you to think, okay, my employment is one stream of income, which is kind of steady. Because every month, you know, you get your paycheck, you pay the bills, and then you you keep repeating the cycle but because you are in a eight to five job and in between you know you had two hours of traffic in the evening two hours of traffic by the time you get home you are extremely extremely exhausted that you really never have room to think how do i create the other six streams of income because your employer will not do that now it's not that people don't know it's not that people are not aware they are but the willpower to sacrifice an extra hour to even start thinking which is my other um, uh, source of income that I can create. And let me tell you Flo, from what I have learned is that most of the things that we excel in are not the skills we acquire along the way. It is the gift that we were already born with. Now you'll find a lot of people in employment and they're always complaining they don't like their job, they feel mismatched, but the comfort of their paycheck keeps them there. Mm -hmm. But inside their heart, they know, I am a Nyambura who needs to be on stage talking. But they haven't posed to think, wait a minute, can talking give me an extra source of income? Number two, if I need to talk, what kind of content am I supposed to deliver to people? If everybody today who, who is listening to us can take stock of their gifts, the things you do naturally, without a struggle, you'll be shocked. 90% of the people are doing things are not, that are not necessarily natural to them. They are doing what they learned, the skill they acquired to give them a pay. Now for them to transition into this other world and be able to create several streams of income, all they need is to start calling out the gift. Now if you love baking, you're in a full-time job and you love to bake, have you ever thought you could actually start baking, talk to the shopkeeper in your hood and tell them, you know what, every day I'll be bringing... 30 cupcakes so that you see how the business runs now what does it take you to bake 30 cupcakes it is a passion it's something you just walk naturally to your kitchen you know where the the, the ingredients are you know where the you know the recipe and you just need 45 minutes and you're done with a passion that is already inside of you so you start taking your 30 cupcakes to the shop and the shopkeeper tells you no tomorrow bring 60. The next day they tell you, no, bring 90, because these things are moving. And before you know it, you have built a whole stream of income, which now starts to, um, to, to complement mm -hmm. mm -hmm. your income. Yeah. Yeah. Now, before you know it, you realize at the end of the month, when you do your books, you're like, wait a minute, I, my salary is 50K gross. But this shop here has sold my cupcakes for 30,000. Yeah. You know, that already starts to speak to you that this is something that should you can actually do to generate another source of income. And if you eventually need to exit your employment, all you need to do is make sure this other source of income, first of all, bring it at the bare minimum of where your salary is. Now that way, if you're there sustainably, six months, you have sold these cupcakes and they give you exactly 50K and this is what your employer gives you. Now you can comfortably say, wait a minute, I think with this gift of mine, I can even make more money as opposed to this employment because this employment takes most of your time. And guess what it gives you, 50K. This side hustle, which we call side hustle, by the way, a lot of times, and that is a, a misnomer like he says, eh? The gifts that God has given us, and they keep pushing to come out. Do you know we've labeled them side hustles? <laughs> that is actually.
actually the mm-hmm. true calling yes. that God gave you. Yes. That's the gift he put in you. You don't struggle. Mm-hmm. And you know, why is it a side hustle? Because you know it's just a passion of yours. Mm-hmm. You, but you haven't taken time to actually quantify and realize, wait a minute, this is a whole uh, income stream. This is a whole business that I can run. So what I would advise people who are watching us is this. Before you exit your employment, don't jump into the deep end. Eh? Sometimes circumstances can throw you in the deep end and you'll have to learn to swim. Mm-hmm. And really, as we yeah. know, it's not a comfortable situation. Mm-hmm. But because you still have that opportunity, just mm-hmm. go and find out what are those things that you just naturally love doing. Mm-hmm. Start doing sparing an hour a day and do it. And over time, if you can start generating an income equivalent to your salary, you're in a comfortable place to now live. None of us has one gift. If you think about about the parable of the talents, which we are all familiar with, none of us has one talent. Unfortunately, a lot of us, even some people who even have five talents, guess what they have done? They've done the ground covered them mm. because they have a skill they acquired mm. along the way mm. and that's what they, uh, they, they, they pursue and that is why you see mm. interestingly mm. a lot of people when they leave employment mm. this job they loved so much and they acquired every skill possible mm. to perfect it mm. when they leave employment mm. they pursue their go- their gift and they even do better wow. mm. they even do better mm. so the question is when they were in employment Where was that gift? (laughs) Why was it not being Mm -hmm. utilized? Because it is buried in the ground. Mm -hmm. And it is time, my viewers Mm -hmm. and listeners, Mm -hmm. that we started becoming students Mm -hmm. of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Or whatever religion you subscribe to, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. God did not give you a gift because you're a Christian, Mm -hmm. or because you're a Muslim, Mm -hmm. or because you're a Hindu. Mm -hmm. God created you in his own image, Mm -hmm. and he planted something in you that is supposed to be used here on earth. Mm -hmm. Go and start writing down. Mm -hmm. What are your natural gifts? Start making a living Mm -hmm. out of Mm -hmm. it. Most natural gifts Mm -hmm. don't require too much time of our time Mm -hmm. because it just comes natural. Mm -hmm. And Yomura, man, you've given us such a detailed experience of how we can transition into that space. But for those of us who, and I speak about the African culture, mostly we are raised to go to school, get a degree, then we get a good job. So some are out there and they are wondering, Flo, I really want to be free. I want to join you guys on this side of networking. Yeah. But what will my family think of me? How can I put my degree on the side? I'm already, I have a PhD. And you're telling me that I can now come into this space of networking and leave all that. I mean, how do you balance that emotion of, uh, I'm such a professional. Networking seems to be like for the, let me use this word because I have been, <laughs> I've been told that it's for the losers. It's for those people probably who didn't go to school. What is the myth behind that? Nyambura can share, then Jeremiah can okay. talk it all out. <laughs> okay, these are my thoughts. First and foremost, um, they say procrastination is a thief of all gifts, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. Of opportunity, basically. Now, I'm aware uh, of people who have, okay, let me not even talk about, let me talk about myself. I was so passionate about pursuing um, higher education in line of my job, okay? And today when I look back, I'm like, why did I even do this program? It cost me a lot of money, it cost me a lot of time. Because when I'm out here, I'm like, really, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't serve me. Why was I doing that? It's because I wanted to fit in to be accepted within the professional space I was in. I wanted to go and produce my card and it has all my titles there. But guess what? All that knowledge, all that education, all that experience, all that time was meant to draw me a paycheck. Now, if you were to be honest with yourself, let me ask you, because especially right now, if you go into our street, you'll be shocked at the level of unemployment that um, everybody's talking about it. Eh? Oh, our young people are not getting jobs. And sometimes I look at them and I ask myself, in all honesty, are you telling me that the only gift God put in these people is to look for a job? <laughs> is there anything that these people can do mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. create a, a living mm-hmm. for not just themselves, but mm-hmm. for us mm-hmm. and for generations to come. Mm-hmm. If you look at the most developed economies, 
for example. Mm -hmm. They offer the best universities in the UK, in the US. Mm -hmm. In the UK, the most important paper mm -hmm. is a diploma. Mm -hmm. That is the most wow. important paper. Mm -hmm. And why a diploma? Because basically a diploma is a, a course you take in line with your natural gifting. If you love woodwork, you mm -hmm. go to a college and perfect woodwork. Mm -hmm. And then start making tables, chairs, uh, whatever I know those people are needed in building construction. If you, are, if you love plumbing, go do a diploma in plumbing. Come and fix people's broken plumbing issues. Go to new construction sites. Get yourself a job. And that is how they've been able to, to, to uh, build thriving economies that keeps on creating jobs and more jobs and more jobs for people. Now, in our society today, we were told by our parents, like you said, work hard, go to school, work hard, mm -hmm. get a good job. Mm -hmm. Did God create us, all of us, to be employed by somebody? Who then is supposed to employ? Mm -hmm. If everybody wants to be employed, <laughs> who is supposed to be the employer? Somebody has to say, you know what? Mm -hmm. Me, I'm not cut out for employment. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, people think that getting employment mm -hmm. is a sure way to earn a living. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you sell yourself to somebody else, you build their dream. So this is my take. Mm -hmm. It's good to, in fact, it's good to pursue uh, the highest level of education yes. you can. Yes. If, if that's your passion, yes. it is okay. Right. Yeah. But at the end of the day, ask mm -hmm. yourself, the anonymous, call yourself into a meeting, into mm -hmm. a boardroom, mm -hmm. and ask your, the members of your board, because <laughs> they are always with you. They are here. They are here. <laughs> ask them. Members? Members. <laughs> <laughs> What is this degree all about? <laughs> if I was not working in this current environment I'm working in, how would this degree mm -hmm. feed my children? Mm -hmm. Because most of the degrees that people are pursuing today mm -hmm. are not meant to build them. They are meant to build another person's dream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I tell myself, going to school is, is a basic, is a must. We're not even negotiating about mm -hmm. it. Because school opens you yeah. up. Yeah, school is supposed absolutely. to expose mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and exposure is supposed to bring out the natural talent in mm -hmm. you i am a huge advocate mm -hmm. of us digging out and yes. bringing out our gifts mm -hmm. because god if you think about this country called kenya and all the resources that god put in this nation mm -hmm. i personally believe we have all the resources mm -hmm. that are needed mm -hmm. to convert this country into a thriving economy mm -hmm. we don't need an expert to come from out there and advise us mm -hmm. because we have god already put a gift in me mm -hmm. he put a gift in you mm -hmm. he put a gift in you mm -hmm. if all of us discover those gifts we'll be shocked at what we can do for ourselves so forget about the society mm -hmm. by the way let me tell you from if you succeed in life, the society will talk about you. If you think you have failed mm -hmm. in life, the society will talk about you. So choose for yourself. Yes. Are you more concerned mm -hmm. about what the society says? Yeah. Or are you more concerned mm -hmm. about who you are mm -hmm. and what God thinks wow. about you? Wow. Wow. The minute you settle that in your mind, mm -hmm. you will forget those papers. Have you ever heard stories of people who... <laughs> Go to university, pursue mm -hmm. a degree, mm -hmm. then they come and give it to their father. Mm -hmm. And they tell you, the father, this was yours. Mm -hmm. Now let me go and mm -hmm. pursue my dream. Actually, no one very specific individual. Yes. Why yes. did they yes. spend four or five years mm -hmm. studying? Because mm -hmm. the father represents the society. Mm -hmm. They wanted to confirm mm -hmm. to the expectation of their father. Mm -hmm. But they knew mm -hmm. they were misaligned. Yes. A lot of people who are pursuing degrees and PhDs, mm -hmm. at the end of the day they do, mm -hmm. they are misaligned, mm -hmm. they are just doing this mm -hmm. for a paycheck. Wow. You cannot build an economy on a paycheck, mm -hmm. because paycheck wow. is for paid bills. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship mm -hmm. is what builds an economy, and wow. a lot of us are entrepreneurs, but the gifts are hidden and Lord have mercy, guys, did you hear her? Because I have had, and actually I will re-listen so that it can really, really sink in. Now she has actually safely handed over us to the other side of the bridge, and this bridge is going to be opened by Jeremiah. And this is now the space of entrepreneurship. The three of us are in the space of a very interesting space. I'll let Jeremiah talk about what we do. And the highs and the lows of that space, is this the new thing? Or is it a scam? I don't know. So Jeremiah, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Usher us into that space so that you can almost go ahead and wrap this up. 
Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Flo, and thank you for this discussion. I think it's been very um, uh, uh, something that really resonates with our hearts, mm -hmm. what we've learned about this industry and so on. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, the space that you are talking about is in the blockchain uh, technology. It's uh, an interesting technology that has actually come into our space. And why this technology is so powerful is because it has three components that drives this uh, uh, industry. And that is security, transparency, and decentralization. Now, the decentralization aspect is where there are no middle people, it gives you as the person, the authority and the power and so on. Um, so as it were, it is a common man revolution. What we say in Kenya, Wanjiku revolution. <laughs> this is the place now where the power has been uh, decentralized to each one of us. Now you are able to do whatever you want to do at the comfort of your own space and you know that no one out there can stop you, can cheat you, can make you uh, lose something or whatever it is, now the power and control is in yourself. So the blockchain um, and uh, the, the, of course uh, cryptocurrencies and all that is now what gives people back the ability to achieve their own personal dreams, personal success at their own terms. And that is what really makes this particular space completely out of this world. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, there's something called a smart contract. Absolutely. If you want to learn more, Nyambura is right there, Jeremiah is right there, and I'm right here. We will definitely all leave our contacts on the channel. Get back to us if you want to know. For me, I look up to Jeremiah, I look up to Nyambura. These guys have built something incredible in, in their own personal finances. And I'm not talking about their banking background. No, I'm talking about me watching them earn some significant amounts of income just within the very last few weeks. And it's been incredible. So we don't want to give everything right here. If you really, really want to know, then like we said, we, we have the resources here and you can choose or you can get to all of us and uh, get to learn what we do so that you can change your life significantly financially. And that's a guarantee we we give you our, our word because it has happened to us. We wouldn't sit here and talk about things that have not happened. And so Jeremiah is an expert. Actually, he's my leader in that specific uh, industry. He's brought my life from one particular level to another particular level. And I'm super, super grateful Then, of course, working alongside Nyambura also it has been phenomenal. Actually, I keep saying Nyambura is one person who has pushed me to be such a thinker, to expand my mind and my knowledge all the time. Because she says, if you don't know it, you search for it. Same to Jeremiah. You know, they wouldn't let me sit here without knowledge. So I'm super grateful uh, to be in the company of amazing people, God-given people. And I know together we're going to do big. So I'm just going to say, what is your take home to the viewers? What is your take home to the viewers? We'll start with Nyambura. All right, uh, thank you very much, Flo. Now, my take home is this. Um, I'm a student of personal development and I've found an amazing, incredible uh, mentor. Some who have um, interestingly passed on to the next life, but they still speak to me today. And one of those people is Al Nightgale. And Al Nightgale says this, your income, Whatever it is that you're doing today, wherever you are, whatever space you're in, your income will always be proportionate to your contribution and your service. So there are a lot of people who are out there uh, doing network marketing businesses of all manner and sorts. There are people who are working in employment and they are forever complaining and saying there is no money, they are underpaid, um, they go into different network marketing businesses and they just criticize and say it doesn't work and they say it's only the people in the leadership who make money. And I want to tell them this. Whatever it is you're doing, wherever you are, whether you are in, in employment or you're an entrepreneur or you're in network marketing, whatever income you're taking home today is exactly equivalent to the contribution you're putting in. And if you want to change the, the game, if you want to change your income, all you need to do is change your contribution. And we have always been told that um, Unfortunately, a lot of people, uh, they treat the symptoms 
okay they you cough you have a cough you go and see a, 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 a clinic in the hood and they say oh you're you're coughing they give you cetirizine quickly and i'm not saying that is bad i'm just saying as a treatment for sneezing and, and all that kind of stuff but you need to see a doctor who says wait a minute we need to go to the lab let us do a lab test and figure out what is causing this cough because a cough is a symptom of an underlying issue even in life you must be able to look at life that way if you are employed and you're feeling like your employer underpays you can i tell you the employer does not underpay you your employer pays you exactly equivalent to what you contribute if you want your employer to pay you more go back and ask yourself what is my contribution to this organization why do people get employed the same day in the same role one rises faster in an honest genuine mm -hmm. environment mm -hmm. and another one gets mm -hmm. stuck mm -hmm. it's because you will notice there's something different this guy who is rising up mm -hmm. is doing mm -hmm. either they're improving their skill or the way they deliver their service is totally different from this other person who gets comfortable and just complains that they don't get a pay rise if you're in entrepreneurship like we are especially in network marketing some people say they don't know people to talk to. I mean, we, like we have been told, people are everywhere. People, even right now, you're watching me, I'm, you're there, I'm seeing you. You're people. Now, if, if you walk around thinking, there are people, there are no people to talk to, guess what? Your results will reflect exactly that. So my take home is this. Everywhere you go, you have everything you need to excel and succeed. But all of it, a hundred percent of it, has been put at your feet. You choose what to do with it. If you want to excel, if you want to be the person everybody, sorry, everybody looks up to and wants to emulate, it's all up to you. If you want to be the one who complains and says in network marketing is only the leaders who get the money, guess what? The leaders who continue to do what they do and they continue to take money and you continue to go home and you broke. Yeah. So be a student of our night girl. Wow. Remember, whatever you are earning today, mm -hmm. income you are earning today, mm -hmm. it is exactly proportionate to your contribution. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow. Wow. I love you even for that. I mean, it's just amazing that the nuggets are so huge. Yet even the hilarious part is also there because it's a direct reflection. <laughs> We're doing direct reflections right now. Whatever I have earned today in my industry is a direct reflection of my character and the inputs that I have applied. So I know I need to do more. Jeremiah, your take home. What do you have to tell our viewers as a last message for this particular series? Well, I just want to say I'm so glad to be in this space and uh, having contributed whatever I've said. I think uh, it's been a very lively discussion. Uh, please put it to heart, whatever, especially uh, Nyambura has said. But I think I just want to mention one thing. I'm so honored to be here, and especially with the uh, floor here, uh, an accomplished author. I'm so honored. There are, there are few times when I've sat uh, with somebody who has actually written a book, authored a book that is being read. Uh, worldwide in more than 13 countries mm -hmm. on um, Amazon. I'm so honored and thank you so much for giving me the, this opportunity to be on your channel. Wow, really I'm super it. excited. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Jeremiah. And uh, above all, let me tell you guys, you honor the people that God puts in your life. This is also uh, one thing I want you to reflect upon. Look back at the people that God has surrounded you with. Have you honored them? Or is all you do complain and talk behind their back and, and bash them? Then in the front, you'll be like, oh, you're nice. No, no, no. God wants us to do, if, if this is the space that he has put us, our heaven here, then we make our heaven so good for each other and we uplift one another. So I'm so humbled to be with the banking pros. Me, Mark, no. Them, yes. <laughs> and look at what that has come out of this conversation. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Today we were demystifying the industry of network marketing. This is just our first. We'll have many more sessions, but we just want to say for today, digest that, think on those things that are good, powerful, glorious, and we'll meet again next time so that you can share more nuggets because I can tell you they are loaded with tons of knowledge. So 
we want to leave that with you today and we say we appreciate you and yes keep subscribing actually nyambura has a channel yes. on youtube what is yes. your channel uh, called nyambura minor, nyambura minor. Yes. find her on youtube subscribe like everything comment and grow together with her and then jeremiah also has a youtube channel i think it's j kendagor yes. there's a space in between because one time i googled i went on youtube searched and there was another jeremiah coming but I, it's what j jeremiah kendagor just said okay. for my whole name jeremiah kendagor and you'll be able to find it then of course flo anyoni uh my channel so i'll leave some other things whether it's their Insta instagram uh, pages and stuff like that i'll leave them you know just below on my channel so like, subscribe, comment, let us know what you think about today's conversation. And if you make a decision out of this situation, then also let us know because we'll be proud to also work with you in whatever area that you, you choose to grow into. So thank you so much and have a blessed day, blessed month of September. Let it be fruitful, let it be glorious. And yes, we will all thank God together when it's all said and done. Bye bye. Peace.